Good. All right. I'm Nicholas Hafner. You may know me by my internet name, Shimura. So I do some stuff. Um, I'm going to talk about Radiance, which is an effort I've been working on sort of collectively over seven years now. Uh, but uh, it's all started about seven years ago when I looked kind of like this, I guess. Um, so what I wanted to do is sort of I wanted to publish some comics and I wanted to have comments under the comics where people could discuss it and I wanted to have forums where people could have more in-depth sort of talks with each other. And uh, so I sort of looked around what kind of software toolkits could I use for this and what I found was, okay, you could either publish comics or you could have a forum but you couldn't have both at the same time. So how can I solve the problem that users have to have maintain multiple logins and sort of track multiple informations and different systems and I really didn't like that they have to do that. So I just wrote my own software. In PHP at the time though, because I didn't know any better. Anyway, it developed over sort of five years. I rewrote the framework every five years and all the software associated with it. And at one point I finally discovered Lisp and decided, okay, so I'm gonna do it right this time. Uh, so the goals I set for myself were basically I wanted to run multiple applications side by side, so a blog and a sort of file box maybe, or a user's panel and administration and all that should all run in sort of the same process, the same kind of environment, and they should be able to share resources between themselves. So users should be shared, authentication, login should be shared, database should be the same so that everything is in one place. But at the same time, I wanted to make as many parts optional as possible so that, for example, if you write a very simple application that only, I don't know, should be publishing some entries, it shouldn't have all this other craft along with it because you just don't need it. And finally, I wanted it to be configurable and administrative so that your application in the end, it wouldn't be just uh, sort of a thing you did for yourself, but it could actually be redistributed to other people so that they can set it up for their own system so that if you write a forum, for example, it's not just for you, but other people potentially can also set it up on their own servers. And finally, I wanted to have well documented and easy to use, but uh, it's always an off the thought, I guess. So, uh, doing this, I encountered a few problems. So, how do I actually make these features optional and exchangeable? And how do I divide up the URL namespace? So, URLs, when you open up a website, it has to sort of decide well, which content am I going to serve and which application is it going to address? And how do these applications sort of communicate with each other how this uh, division actually happens? And finally, how is deployment going to be not a pain in the ass? So the first problem led me to a solution I call interfaces, which is kind of the idea of standardizing access to common sort of features in the framework. Instead of providing the, uh, the features directly from the framework, I specify an interface that sort of defines what it looks like, what kind of definitions you have, and then you can load an implementation of this interface on demand. So here's a sort of an example definition of a cache interface that would provide caching. It has just very simple, only one function to invalidate a cache, and a macro which allows you to cache its return value. So that's very simple. Once you have this interface definition in an application, you can start using it. And you do that by an ASDF extension which allows you to specify your dependencies. Uh, you can say, I depend on an interface called cache. And you don't actually specify a specific implementation that's resolved at a later point when you actually load the system in. And then in your actual file, you can start using these macros and functions that the interface defines. But at this point, there's no code, so you also need an implementation at some point. But you can write that separately. And you do that by basically just taking the functions and symbols uh, defined by the interface and overriding them. So by using this overriding mechanism, you can directly write the actual uh, functionality into the interface without having some kind of interaction layer that would slow things down. So there is no overhead because everything is direct calls. You can all use macros, you can use functions, you can use classes, you can sort of expose all kinds of different definitions through this interface because it relies on just overriding things. It just works out of the box. And it allows this framework to grow or shrink as needed because only the features that are actually provided are loaded when you actually need them. And the administrator in the end, when he sets up his thing, he can decide which implementation I'm going to use, which things do I care for, do I care more about having more features or sort of being minimal or fast or whatever. So the second problem with URL namespace 
was how to deliver this content on a specific address and how do I share this address space between applications. And so usually when you have a sort of a web framework, what you do is you have a, an HTTP server and the user connected to it and then a request comes in and then you do a dispatch based on the URL and you figure out, okay, I'm going to call this part of the application, application talks to the template system, form some kind of HTML and sends it back. So Radiance has this similarly, but what it does is, upon dispatch, it translates the URL into sort of an internal representation that is standardized and formalized in some way. And then when you assemble the HTML, you do the inverse of that. So the application itself only deals in the internals, whereas the user and the HTTP server deal within the externals. Thus you create sort of two different uh, worlds within that. So here we have a very simple page definition, which is supposed to run on the to-do domain on the add path. So this is very internal. Obviously, you don't have a to-do domain anywhere accessible for the user, but uh, you sort of pretend as an application writer that this is the case. And then in your actual HTML, for example, here, have a link that refers to this similar kind of scheme. So what the uh, framework has to do when a request comes into, for example, example.com slash do it slash add, it has to map this to to do slash add and dispatch to this page and reverse uh, the link in the template and finally deliver the assembled content. So it does that by route definitions, which are sort of uh, two ways of going from one space into the other and it declares how it should look at these URLs and translate them into a, another way. So this is a very sort of intuitive, simple mapping using strings and regexes. So you define it from here, from the external data URL into the internal representation by cutting out uh, the path at the end here and putting it here. And then you do the reverse as well. You can also do more complicated things by defining functions. So the routing system is not primitive as just regexes, but you can do arbitrary things values away and so forth, so you can do pretty complicated stuff. So it's actually, the system allows it to be easier to visualize when you're developing, because you have sort of, you're actually talking about URLs when you define your pages, but at the same time, because there's a system that is powerful enough to easily rewrite them, it's not a hindrance to the administrator that the FDN has to configure the system, because you can still manipulate the URLs properly. And finally, the deployment uh, problem I sort of solved by what I call environments. Um, they should unify the configuration of the different applications that run in your system and uh, ease the setup for non-developers. I wanted to have the possibility that non-listers could also install this in the same way that they could install, I don't know, some kind of PHP uh, thing with I don't know. So interfaces are basically the idea that you encompass all the configurations and files within a specific directory and then you can use uh, common list functions to modify that. So for example here we modify which interface we use for, uh, which implementation we use for the caching interface. So we set it to my cache, which changes a configuration file on disk and this, can, uh, this configuration file is sort of human readable so anyone can change it without actually having to touch code. And once you do this mapping, when you actually load this to do app, we saw before, it will do this interface resolution to my cache and load this to implement the interface. But you can also use this environment stuff for your own purposes. So for example, if you have, I don't know, an image cache, you can use this to figure out where should I actually store all these files so that they're easily uh, trackable and uh, manageable through the framework collectively. What do I, and you can sort of define parameters that you can configure and then refer to them in your code rather easily. So that allows you to sort of, because everything is contained under a single kind of parameter, the environment name, that allows you to switch between setups very easily. So you could have an environment for development, one for production, and you could simply start it up with a different environment name and you have all the settings applied from the production setup. It has uh, human readable configuration files for people with no list knowledge, so most of the system is uh, you can change without having to actually learn how to code in list. And it unifies the place for storage of files, so 
if you need to back up or anything. You don't need to learn about every application, how it does things, you just have one common location. So putting it all together, the bulk of the features uh, of the framework are provided through interfaces, so they're pluggable, but they're standardized, so you can work against them, but uh, you don't actually need to have them in your image if you don't uh, require them. Routing gives a very convenient development view so that you can work in a sort of familiar environment in a similar way as when you're uh, deploying it. Uh, the setup of these routes is very quick and relatively simple in most cases, but you can still do more if you want to. And finally, the environment standardized file storage. Um, they give a unified configuration and setup. So I did write a few applications already using Radius. So there's a blog, an image for the file storage, a paste service, and an IRC log mirror. That's actually pretty popular, apparently. At least how uh, Flare tells me so. Um, and there's a bunch of resources. There's a website. There's an extensive documentation that covers pretty much every aspect of the system in fairly good detail. Everything is with doc strings and all of that good stuff. There's also a lengthy tutorial that walks you through all of the steps of building an entire application. So it goes from the initial setup and sort of dynamically builds up an ever more complex application that you might want to develop. So it gives you a sort of a proper view of what the development process is like. You can also get all the existing applications and simply run them on your system if you want to do that. So, yeah. Thanks to all these good people who helped me assemble this task. And uh, yeah, to my feedback and all that. Thank you very much. So that this route and uh, generate HTML on the client side, but not server side. Um, and the template system is actually not part of the framework at all. So uh, what you use for HTML generation is completely up to you. What the framework provides you with is sort of two sets of functions that translate the URL from one space to the other. So if you wanted to do client side generation, you would have to sort of communicate that protocol to the client side as well. But you could do that easily enough. So, from what I understood, you wrote your own uh, HTTP parser <coughs> to get all the information from a request. Um, did you come to the point writing your own HTTP server, or did you use someone? Or no, uh, the server part is actually also an interface. So you can use whichever backend you want. The default one is Hunchitude, but it also has bindings to Wookie and Woo and potentially other ones in the future. Okay. So you can switch them out and use them sort of without having to care about what's going on on the Yes. One more thing that you just switch from PHP to this. Oh, uh, well, at some point I was just. Uh, I don't know, I was in an internship for nine months and I needed something to do and I decided to check out this uh, for some reasons. And then I just thought, yeah, it's pretty good stuff, so I'm going to just rewrite my thing to learn this. And um, that's how it started about three, four years ago. Yeah, been working on it ever since. <laughs> now, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you use this technique of uh, doing some preliminary definitions with the interface and then you overwrite them with yeah. the implementation. Uh, I think that to mean that every kind of installation can only have one particular implementation. Yes. Is that ever a problem, or how do you solve it if some installation would need uh, several different implementations? So the idea is that the application shouldn't need to care which implementation you choose. So it should be agnostic to towards that, but the administrator in the end should be able to decide, okay, I care about this database, or I care about caching performance in this way. So they, get, they should be able to choose, and in this sense, it doesn't really make sense to have two at the same time. Yeah. Um, we have time for more questions? Yes. So, so I saw, just, saw that it's, it's not included in the quick list, but it's yes. easily installable. How is it included? So the environments have a bit of a problem, because the actual resolution of an interface implementation happens once you actually have an environment loaded, you can't actually load an application 
straight up without defining the environment first. Because it needs to know, okay, which implementation you actually choose, and that depends on the configuration you want. So you need to actually have some kind of input beyond just loading this system. And that's why I can't put it into QuickList, because it just errors and presents you with the debugger that lets you choose the environment. And Zach won't like that. So I have my own disk that lets you install all these systems just as conveniently, but uh, I don't have this sort of limitation of, uh, that the environments unfortunately provide. Yeah. Yes, I want to have a default environment. What? Some default environment. Uh, because I thought it would be might be confusing if you're working in a special kind of environment that you configure and then you try to load your application but it goes to the default one and then you try to run something and it doesn't work the way you expect it to. It does have an option in the debugger where you can just continue and it chooses the default one, but I thought it would be less confusing than choosing a default one. Yeah, the default default. one is just issue warnings. <laughs> warnings can't, I can't do either because if you have a warning in the quick list system, it's not one accepted. I mean, I can't have that. What's the goal of I've considered it, but it's, you know, it's not a big deal. It's just one line more to install it. Uh, you said something about uh, managing identities, managing logins. Mm -hmm. Can you please detail that a little? Okay, so uh, sort of identity is user agent users are managed by multiple kinds of systems interfaces. So there's an interface that just provides you with user objects of some sort, and you can retrieve users by a name, and then you can set certain fields on the user but that doesn't really give you much yet. What you have as well is a second interface that provides authentication so that you can sort of, uh, you know, actually log in and be a user on the web page. So these sort of responsibilities are tied up. But how exactly the authentication is provided to you is dependent on the implementation you choose for it. So you could have something like OpenID or OpenAuth or whatever with a remote service, or you could have just passwords or whatever. It depends on the implementation. Okay, thank you very much.